subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV. Hello, lovely students, viewers at home. This is another episode of Joy Learning's Junior High School Basic 8, that is JHS 2. I know you are waiting for me to come and discuss and learn social studies with you. So, as I usually do, pick your materials learning materials, pencils, pen, notepads, and we start. So we kick, we kick, and then we move together. Now, I'm your usual facilitator, Anita Autry Asari. Good. Today is another interesting topic for you. Now let's look on the screen. What do you see on the screen? Hmm, I know some of you are saying, I can see Ghana, I can see Mali, I can see Nigeria, I can see Togo, and other countries. So our topic for today is Ghana's cooperation with other nations. Ghana's cooperation with other nations. So there's a picture or map of West African countries called ECOWAS. ECOWAS. Good. Very interesting topic today. I know you will enjoy it. Right. So, on your screen is the Social Studies, JHS2, Ghana's cooperation with other nations. Whom do you cooperate with in class? Your friend in the classroom? You cooperate with the person when you are learning. You put your heads together and you discuss. So, it's the, way Ghana, the same way Ghana also cooperates with other countries. Now, before we start the lesson, let's look at our learning objectives, which will be achievable at the end of the discussion or the learning process. Right. So by the end of the lesson, you, the learner, will be able to define the following. Cooperation, cooperation. Then the types of cooperation, forms of cooperation. Two, state ways by which Ghana cooperates with other countries and international bodies. Explain why it is necessary for Ghana to cooperate with other countries and identify a set of basic rules for accepting aid or help or cooperation. And then lastly, why Ghana do not show interest in foreign matters. Good. So let's take the first discussion, which is what is cooperation or what is cooperation? Right. Cooperation or cooperation means working together with others to achieve a common purpose or it is the act of coming together for the purpose of working together for a common objective. So, for example, you can be given a project work in class and then you come together, you do it. It's a competition in class. So everybody will come and represent. Uh, and then you like your group, group to be the best. So you add certain things to your work so that your work will excel and look very what, appealing to the supervisor or the facilitator that is going to do what? Give you the marks. So it's the same as cooperation too. It's working together. Right. So, for example, Ghana cooperates politically, socially, and economically with many countries internationally or with other countries in the sub-region of Africa or West Africa. So, some of the organizations are the AU and the UN, African Union and then um, at the UN. Cooperation with other nations of the world is most important for the social and economic growth of any country. It is very important to cooperate. In life, you need to cooperate. You have to cooperate with parents, siblings, classmates. If there is no cooperation, no work will be done. Good. Now let's look at the types of cooperation. The types. So we have types. And we have two types of cooperation. So this is the 
bilateral cooperation and then multilateral cooperation. So when you hear the word bi, then you hear the word multi. So bi means what? Two. Bi means two. And then multi means many, many. Right. But then we will still define what is bilateral cooperation. So as I earlier said, when we say bi, bi means two. So bilateral cooperation. This is a kind of friendly relationship or cooperation that exists between two countries. So for example, you can mention a country, your country, and another country. If it's international, Ghana and United States of America or South Africa or any other country, you can, you can just list them. So these two countries sign agreements to cater for their common interests. Example, cooperation between Ghana and Ivory Coast. You know, Ivory Coast, when we looked at the, the uh, ECOWAS member states uh, map, we saw that it was Ivory, Ivory Coast there. So cooperation between Ghana and Ivory Coast some years ago to resolve our border disputes. There was a problem there. We didn't know whether it was for Ghana or it was, was for Ivory Coast, but they were able to cooperate. And over recent oil um, disputes too, or cooperation between the Nigeria and Cameroon over the Delta Peninsula. It was also a cooperation. They had to come together and they sign agreements or treaty and there is peace now. Some of these countries, Ghana has bilateral cooperation with is Germany. Germany and then we have Japan and others. So I know JICA and then uh, Frederick Ebert Foundation, that is for the Germans. They are all part of what? Um, cooperation between Ghana and these international uh, countries. Right. Let's look at the multilateral cooperation. Multilateral cooperation. I know you are enjoying it. Just take your time as I explain, pay, pay attention, and then you listen and then you jot down the salient points in your own words so that you can be able to understand. So, right. This is a type of cooperation which exists among two or more countries and international bodies with common objectives. So if let's a country, let's say Sweden, has certain objectives and the objectives they have, we also want the same objectives, then it's a multilateral objective. You understand? So they are saying that different countries can form a group and agree on a common platform in their collective interest to cooperate on a common goal. So you can pick something. Maybe Ghana can say, I want to do this. This year, I want to do this economically. Then another country internationally will also say, oh, it's the same thing we want to do. So let's come together, put our heads together, and do it for the heart, the progress of these two countries, or if there are three or more, because it's multilateral. Right. Examples are the United Nations, African Union, and the Commonwealth of Nations, and the Economic Community of West Africa, which is called ECOWAS. ECOWAS. Now let's look at the forms of cooperation. So cooperation, we have two types, and then we have the forms. So we are looking at the forms. We have political cooperation. This is the form of cooperation where countries from international political organizations such as the United Nations and the African Union so as to give themselves respect and influence at international meetings. This type of cooperation also sets up embassies. You know, sometimes you'll be driving through some parts of Accra, then you see Togo embassy, see German embassy, Russian embassy. So these are political words. They are forms of the cooperation. These people stay here and they work with their uh, countries for in Ghana for their country. Are you okay with me? Right. So this type of cooperation also sets up embassy, setting up of joint commission, peacekeeping, and official visits. It is open to all independent, peace-loving states in the world. So as we are saying, sometimes um, when there is a war 
or there's a conflict somewhere. Even in Ghana, you can see that uh, um, um, some people from Ghana, which is the military, will move from Ghana to maybe Sierra Leone or, for example, Liberia. When the Liberia, uh, there was war in Liberia, some soldiers moved from Ghana to go and keep peace. So this is also part of what? Political cooperation. Right. Cultural cooperation. This is the form of cooperation where countries agree to learn. So they made something good in Ghana educationally, let's say, culturally, and then another country would learn it and then also go and depict the same thing in her country. And, shared, and they also share another's uh, cultural heritage through cultural exchange. You understand that? It helps to maintain their cultural heritage. Example is the All African Cultural Festival in Algeria, which was organized by the AU. Now you see sometimes they during the AU day, most schools try to depict the culture of some of the ECOWAS countries. So they look very nice in their apparel, some wear Senegalese dresses, some wear others, and it looks so beautiful. Some also dress like Ghanaians, and it looks so marvelous and beautiful. So this is what we are talking about, the cultural cooperation. And the Festival of Arts and Culture in Nigeria also is also part of the cultural cooperation. Panafest, Panafest, those days, Panafest, in Emancipation Day, and then exchange programs and scholarships are all part of cultural cooperation. Economic cooperation. This is a form of cooperation where countries come together to undertake trade agreements, trade, business. I want to bring a lot of um, phones to Ghana, laptops to Ghana. Oh, okay, that's good. What are they going to Oh, We are going to give it to teachers. So teachers will enhance teachers to be able to use their laptops and, and enhance their IT level. I think that's great, you understand. So that's what I used to do my slides before I come on, on set. Good. This is a form of cooperation where countries come together to undertake trade business, technical aid, joint businesses. Like, for example, Ecobank is French, but it's here in Ghana to do business, um, banking business, you understand? And then we have the CIMAO project also in Togo, and which is cooperated between Ghana, Togo, and Cote d'Ivoire. Then we have the ECA and other examples of economic operations or community in Ghana. Technical cooperation. This is a form of cooperation which enables member countries to benefit from technical expertise of the advanced ones within the group. Now, you see that sometimes there are certain countries, they are very good in, tech, um, uh, in tech, uh, technology, you understand. So when your country is not so versatile or is not good in that area, you can go and then seek advice or uh, get an, a resource person from that country to come and help the people in your country to be able to know how to use these uh, um, gadgets. Uh, for example, let's use the word gadgets, maybe uh, uh, in, at the um, airport. At the airport, they want to have engineers who will be able to um, repair some of the parts of the aircraft. But if they don't have anybody and somebody has the know-how, they have to bring the person down. So the person will help the Ghanaians who are here to learn how to do it, and then they will also become versatile in that area, and then they do it on their own. Now, areas where such expertise is tapped include atomic energy, atomic energy, construction industry, the military, and the aerospace ship, you understand. So I brought a little bit of the uh, um, airport aircraft business into that. Ghana, for example, has benefited from countries like China, Japan, Germany, the USA of America, the United States of America, and Britain. Educational cooperation. Educational cooperation. Now, this is the cooperation which is aimed at improving the quality of education among the countries. This is made up of exchange of educational programs. Yes, 
at the university level, you can see that some people move from one country to another to come and learn certain, uh, certain subjects or courses here. When you go to the University of Ghana, you see students who come there from Britain. They come and learn um, certain, the way of playing the drums or at Interben and others. It's an exchange program. And some also move from here to also learn their culture or other subject areas, which is relevant to them. Okay, so this is made up of exchange educational programs, awarding of scholarship to students to learn and acquire the relevant knowledge and skills needed to accelerate growth and development in terms of what? Education. For example, the Commonwealth, the United Nations, other countries like Cuba. Cuba, what do we do there? Most people go there to learn medicine and come back to help Ghana, Canada and others have offered scholarship to Ghanaians to study in those countries to enhance their education. Ghana is a member of the international organization such as the Economic Country Community of West African State, which is the ECOWAS, uh, the African Union and the Commonwealth of Nations. This is a healthy sign because Ghana is not alone. You always don't have to be alone. In life, you need to cooperate in everything that you do. Without cooperation, you cannot get ahead where you can't do anything. You, can, you would like try to do things by yourself, but you need a help. You understand? So we are saying that um, this Ghana must not be alone, but cooperate with other nations and international organizations for their mutual benefits. Wow, that's a very wonderful, colorful picture on your screen. I'm sure some of you are guessing. What can you see? What can you see? Somebody say, I can see the Ghana flag or the colors or that depicts that um, this Ghana, mm, the red, gold, green. I can see another country's um, Ivory is, is Senegal, I can see Ivory Coast, I can see Ivory Coast, and others, and others. I can see Nigeria, I'm sure you can also see that. And then other countries, which makes up the ECOWAS. And ECOWAS is made up of what? 15 countries. At first it was 16, but now there are 15 countries. I'm going to give you an assignment to draw these um flags to depict at the country and, and then you draw it nicely and then you send it to Joy Learning TV on YouTube. Right. Right. Now let's look at um, the international organization in which Ghana is a member. Ghana is a member of what? The AU and also uh, ECOWAS and then United Nations. Right. Now let's look at ways by which Ghana cooperates with other countries. Yes, so one, some of the ways by which Ghana or the government brings about cooperation among themselves include the following. Ghana cooperates with other nations politically, that is by being a member of international political organizations such as the United Nations and the African Union. Point number three. Ghana also cooperates with other nations economically by being a member of the economic groupings such as ECOWAS. So Ghana is part of what? ECOWAS to help develop the country economically. Yes. So you cannot live in isolation. You have to be part of anything that globally is going on. So Ghana cooperates with other nations um, to help the country develop. Again, Ghana also cooperates with other nations culturally and educationally. Remember, we said that earlier on, but we are trying to ex explain it further. So educationally, uh, by the establishment of exchange programs in education and culture. Ghana organizes a biennial cultural festival for Africans in the diaspora, known as the Pan-African Festival of Arts and Culture. Right. Point number five, Ghana also cooperates with other nations just by being a member of international 
organization such as the African Union, ECOWAS, United Nations, and the Commonwealth of Nations. Then point number six, sports. Remember what happened recently? And Ghana was so excited. Everybody was so happy. So sports, Ghana takes active part in sports at all levels, subcontinental, that's the WAFU, Continental, African Cup, and World Cup, Olympic Games, and Commonwealth Games. So Ghana cooperates. So you see that Ghana will play with this country. And then sometimes when they are playing, then some of the people will say they will not eat their, their fufu, but hopefully that day a lot of people ate their fufu, even in abundance. I ate mine very well because I was very excited when we qualified. Now, Setting of embassies or Ghana gains cooperation with other nations by the establishment of embassies. So, in other countries, we have Ghana ambassador to, um, let's say, Togo, Ghana ambassador to Nigeria, Nigeria ambassador to Ghana, um, Ivory Coast ambassador to Ghana. So, it's a vice versa because they are all. All, all together, they are working together, they are cooperating together to achieve a common objective. These high commissioners represent Ghana in these countries. Ghana High Commissioner to Britain and others. We have a lot of them in every country. So you present your country in that particular. Wow. There's another wonderful picture on your screen. What can you see? What can you say about the picture on your screen? I know you are saying you have seen your president, your president of the land, Nana Adodankwa Akufuadu, who is the current president of Ghana. No, let's say something here. Now, you can see Nana Adodankwa shaking hands with somebody. Who is that person? Somebody has said it. Yes, you are right. That is President Cyril Ramaphosa from South Africa. He came down to cooperate with Ghana. And who is Ghana? The president is representing Ghana because he sits on the president's the seat. So when anybody who comes from another country to Ghana must first visit the president and have a what? A bilateral cooperation with him. They came to have their own pers personal um, conversation. But the main purpose was for cooperation, to discuss what is going on in South Africa with the president. And the president also, you understand that, so they are cooperating. So you can see they, they all have a cheerful face. You don't have to fight another country, like some other countries are doing. You don't have to, they have to cooperate. So they will all head, uh, move ahead, ahead in life and then economically we become very happy now let's look at why it is necessary for ghana to cooperate with other nations so why it is very important for the president to receive president Cyril ramaphosa it is very necessary we'll see why it is it, supposed to be like that now one to maintain friendly relationship with them you know some of our relatives in ghana are in south africa it's the same way some people in South Africa are also here in Ghana. And some of you, your parents are also in U.S., some are in U.K., in all over the world. So you have to have a good relationship with everybody. You have to cooperate. If you don't do that, what happens? I don't know, but you know the answer. When I give you the assignment, you will be able to answer. So one, to maintain friendly relationship with them. No country can live in isolation. So cooperation with other countries is necessary for so as to bond the friendship between nations. Two, taking part in global fights. Global fights. It is necessary for Ghana to cooperate with other nations so as to take part in global fights against hunger, disease, human rights, abuses, poverty, and ignorance so if there's a country that is not pulling up there's poverty there what can ghana do ghana must help if there's war conflict ghana must go and help to cease fire so that they stop and then there will be peace 
there in that particular country. Getting help in times of trouble. Wow. Getting help in times of trouble. Cooperation. You have to get help because when somebody is cooperating with you or you are dancing and the person you are throwing yourself back. You remember those type of dance? You throw yourself back and people hold you, then they throw you in front again. But if you throw yourself back and then they all move away, what happens? You will fall. So it's very, very necessary to get help when you are in trouble. It is necessary for Ghana to cooperate with other countries so as to benefit from their knowledge and help, especially in times of difficulty. Peace Corps Voluntary Services Overseas, Canadian International Development Agency, and other NGOs give relief items to Ghana during natural disasters. I do not want to give a... I remember circle something happened there some time ago, and some countries came in to give aid to, to the victims, and Ghana also helped some of the victims. Now, let's look, move on to the next point, maintenance of international peace and security. Apart from strengthening the bond of friendship, Member, members' country begin to respect the rights of other countries and contribute troops for peacekeeping to help maintain world peace. Way back some years ago, the Lebanon, where well, was crisis in Lebanon, and the Ghanaian soldiers had to move from Ghana to Lebanon to help in what? Bringing peace to Lebanon. Hopefully now, by the grace of God, that one has also subsided. And another one has gone up again. We'll get there. Promotion of cultural solidarity. It is very necessary for Ghana to cooperate with other countries to enable or to help them to promote their cultural solidarity. For example, the All African Cultural Festival in Algeria. That was very interesting. And All Black Festival of Arts and Culture in Nigeria helped to promote cultural solidarity so when it happens like that people from ghana will be invited there and other people from other countries also be invited there and they all see the way culture is be being depicted and it's so lovely to see ghanaians in their cabine slates the men in their cloth and then other countries also with their um, dress dress style and so interesting good Let's look at some of the basic rules for accepting aid. Why do we have to cooperate and give aid or help or cooperate with other nations when they are in trouble? The process to follow in accepting help is as follows. One, examine co cooperation agreements very well to make sure there is fairness. Two, investigate whether the cooperation will not lead to any negative effect on the individual or on that country. So before somebody will get an aid, you have to investigate whether there is cooperation. If the person is not on good terms, you don't expect to go and collect something from the person. It may bring you a problem. You understand, right? Find out if there is a hidden motive. This means that some people, that means that some people can bring you something, but there is a hidden motive behind. There's a reason why the person is giving you that thing. He gives it to you and then now he tells you that he's tied your hands behind you and then when he says, do this, you have to do it because you have collected something from the person. So you have to find out whether there's a hidden motive. This means the country must decide whether the cooperation is purely humanitarian. If it's really for an aid, if it's really that, oh, we really want to help Ghana. You are bringing us a lot of textbooks for us to help uh, use it to teach the children in the classroom. It's for free. Oh, we are very happy because it's going to help you right there learning social studies right now to enhance your education in social studies. Now, the fourth point, decide on whether your nation is willing to be friend to the, the nation giving you the help or not. You have to decide whether you want it or you don't want it. Don't be in a, as if, let me try and see whether I can take it or not. Then the next point is, decide on the terms of the cooperation. There should be terms. When I give you this, these books, 
I expect that the children there should excel in that particular area. Then you are, that's the terms. These are the conditions. Then six, accept the help if it will not have negative effects on your country. So for example, Ghana, you should accept the help if it will not have any effect. If it's good, you take it. If it's bad, reject it. Okay. Now let's look at the next point. Why Ghanaians do not want to show much interest in foreign matters. Oh, why? Why should we do that? There's a reason. So we are looking at it. One, low literacy rates. If people are not educated, eh, they are not educated, they don't understand certain things, they will never like to show interest in foreign issues. Ghanaians do not read and write. So I'll say most, some Ghanaians do not read and write, making them unable to read nor listen to foreign news. But we are very happy now that Free SHS is giving all school children, school going, that, that age brackets, for those who are supposed to go to school to learn. So the time will come, everybody in Ghana will be educated and will understand certain things. People will not throw rubbish uh, into the gutters, defecate all around, you understand? At least a little education will go through somebody's head. So I'm so happy with the um, free SHS um, education. Now, let's move on to the next point. Low level of political education. Ghanaians have little political education, which is not making them to be aware of international events or things that are happening around them, even in Ghana. Why that? The reason is they do not listen. They do not listen to talks on TV show, on radio. So whatever comes, they jump into it and they say, they speak their mind and they get away with it. So you should be ready to do what? To listen to news, listen to foreign news, and conclude so that you can also debate. If you don't listen to these things, once people are discussing, you, you may try to say something and what you say will be out of context. You understand? But if you have the facts, as little as you are watching right now, you'll be able to do what? Join the discussion and bring out your views because you are a social studies student. Three, non-interest in events in other countries. So none interest in events of, in other countries. Ghanaians do not have interest in events in other countries apart from sports, such as World Cup, African Cup of Nations. That's all that they, they are interested in. It shouldn't be like that. Then complex, complexity of most international issues. Most people in Ghana are not aware that issues in other countries can affect Ghana in several ways. Why are we saying that? Yes, when your house is very close to someone's house and then the house has a problem or there's fire, you see that if you are not careful, it will get into your house. Your house will also start burning. So you should be interested in someone's um, um, problem. You understand? Yes, there's an adage in tree. Meaning that when somebody's beard is burning, the beard does not burn. It's an adage. So when someone's beard is burning, fetch water and keep it. So that when it comes to your turn, quickly cool it. Right. So most uh, uh, people in Ghana are not aware of issues in other countries that um, can affect Ghana in several ways. So example is... War in Togo, those days, there were some wars in Togo, and when you had the mine in the old, some years back, and then Cote d'Ivoire, can spread to Ghana, because they are very close to us, can spread to Ghana, leading to emerging of refugees. I don't want to be a refugee. So when there's something happening in Togo, I must watch the way I talk as a social studies facilitator, and you as a social studies student, what are some of the ways that or methods that you can advise even your classmates, who's your friend there to do? Would you advise him or her to join them? Oh, beat people around. No, you don't have to do that. You need to give the person advice that if you do that, you turn into a refugee in someone's country. And being a refugee is not good at all. It's not interesting. And it also brings about 
inflation, high inflation rates among others. Prices of things will skyrocket. You can't buy, you'll be hungry at home. And ev evidence now, right now what is happening is this war, you know that, in Russia and Ukraine. And it has affected our country and has led to the economic crisis in many parts of the world. We don't want to discuss Russia and uh, Ukraine right, right now, but you know that what is happening there is not the best at all. I saw it on TV, see little children moving with their parents with only their knapsack bag, a little water. It's very, very disgusting. And I don't want that to happen to any of us here in Ghana. Right. Assignment time again. Social studies assignment time. All that we have discussed, we are going to discuss it a little. And then you, I'll give you assignment. And then you, you send it to me on Joy Learning TV on YouTube. Joy Learning TV on YouTube. It can be on Facebook. And I'll mark them. I've marked the other exercise. And I'll send them back to you. So you have to do this one too. And they send it to me on Joy Learning TV on YouTube um, for what? Your marks to be presented to you. Remember I told you that the best person that does my assignment will take some exercise book, the new um, social studies test book, and other stationery from Joy Learning. Good. Assignments. What's assignment? That's it on your screen. So quickly write it. I'm giving you two minutes. I know you are smart. You can write very fast. And you have a nice handwriting too. I know. Because some of you, when I was going through your scripts, I said, wow, my students can write very well. I love that very much. So let's look at the question. State two types of cooperation. Easy, isn't it? Yes. I know some of you can answer it right now. Question number two. List four reasons why it is necessary for Ghana to cooperate with other nations. And question number three, list four ECOWAS countries. In fact, this question, when you write, list the four, try and draw their, um, their maps. You understand? They, that, that's the logo, the logo. So like Ghana, if you want to write, draw Ghana, you have to draw it and then you color it and then you send it to Joy Learning TV on YouTube. Are you okay with me? So on that note, on that note, I know you have written all your questions. I am your presenter, Anita Autry Asari. I hope you enjoyed my lesson. It's a bye-bye from me. Bye-bye. Bye. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV.